Now we're going to merge a couple concepts by creating a frequency chart from a continuous distribution. Earlier we looked at what happens if you have just 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, and 5s. It's pretty easy to set the options, count up how many of each one there is, and even be able to calculate the relative frequency by dividing each number by the total. Well, what happens if you get a distribution that looks like this? These numbers span from uh, it looks like 73 to 153 and maybe there's even higher ones snuck in there. But there's a lot of numbers going on right now. You can't just create a frequency chart from that. And it looks like there's so many numbers that a stem plot's actually starting to look like not such a great idea either. So when we have situations like this, this is where we would create a histogram. But before you could do that, We'll get to that in a moment, but before you can do that, you need to create a frequency chart with this data by using a technique called binning. Conceptually, it's very similar to what you do with a stem plot, but you write it a little bit differently. So we're going to look at our lowest value and our highest value, and we're going to try to create roughly eight clumps, eight groups that we can put numbers in. So let's take a look at this. If we had roughly just above 70 up to 80, above 80 up to 90, 90 to 100 and so forth all the way up to 180 we would be able to capture every single number in here it looks like 171 is their biggest one just saw that one um, we'd be able to find a home for every one of these numbers and the way we would do that is we would look here uh, the 70.1 to 80 so just over 70 all the way up to 80 let's go through and see how many numbers we can find Looks like we just have the 1. So our frequency would just be 1. Same thing with the 80 to 90. Well, how many do we have? We have an 86, 88. And you keep going through and you look for all the numbers in that range. You'll notice that we used uh, an 80.1 instead of just writing 80 in here. The reason that that's there is so that it's clear where the number 80 would go. If the number 80 was in here, it would actually go to in this first yellow bin. If the number 90 is in here, it would go in the green bin. And so there's, there's a few different ways you can write it. I'm not picky about how you write it. And if they're all integers like this, you could just write 71 to 80, 81 to 90, and that would be perfectly fine. But just make it clear whenever you do this exactly where the data is supposed to go so there's no uncertainty. Going back to this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers in the 80, so our frequency is 4. And you'd go on for each of these bins and count up how many numbers fall in each of these ranges. Now this would take you quite a while to do, so I won't ask you to do this too much, but this is how it works. Then down here, calculating the relative frequency, you would have to find how many the total is. You'd add it all up. There's 51 numbers in this list, and you would divide. I have one number or one number in this range, this bin, divided by that 51 equals point or 61, excuse me, equals 0 0.016. 4 divided by 61, point zero six six, and so forth. And that's how you would find all the relative frequencies. It's fundamentally the same as what we did with categorical data and stem plots. We just have a different way of grouping things into these chunks right here.